Alright, sorry about the video, the audio quality here. But that is what you will get after you use Chaos Black and two coats of Rock Art Flesh. Next, I just started on it. I'm going to do two thin coats of Screaming Skull, let me just triple check it here. Yes. So I'm going to do two thin coats of that. And then I will bring you guys back to show that result. Okay. So this kind of gives you an idea of what I deal with when I'm painting. See I have Gundam pieces up here. Our special one that I'm working on. Just have the torso and weapons. I mean the waist and weapons to go on him. Paints are way down way down here these are actually the paints I'm using for this kit there's more paints farther over here I'm using for this guy actually see magnets runners brushes all the fun stuff all around let me just bring you guys in really quickly. So, two thin coats later, we've ended up with this. On this like here as well. Very messy Tyranid. But basically, all that I'm going to do is take this one here. And I will want my actually my small layer brush. One of my small layer brushes. And I'm just gonna go in recesses or where those bent things are or around the gun area. And we'll do the tongue as well. And then after that, we're just going to do a fine highlight of Halibut Flash. On some of the raised areas. So, let me do the shade first, and then I'll bring you guys back to do that other part. Just as a quick note, I am listening to music. I'm trying to see the corner, corner of my iPad. So, yes, I will be back in a few minutes once that's all done. Okay. So, as you can see here, I have done all the shading. So, now what I'm going to do, and I've already cleaned up using again screaming skull now I'm gonna go over and do all the fine highlights 
with Pallid Witch Flesh on all 12 of them. And then, yeah. So, I'll be back once that's all finished. And then after that, we will start working on the carapace and the claws and stuff like that. So, be, and I would recommend getting, having a fine very fine brush with an artificial artificial brush so yeah I'll be back in a little bit here okay so after a very very light highlight it's gonna be really hard for you guys to see kind of see at the end of the tail you do not want to overdo it with the pallid witch flesh trust me you don't it would brighten it up so much that it would just look very very awkward and weird so for the carapace itself For mine, I have a custom one. It is up to you on whether if you want to continue on with this or if you want to always substitute in other colors, you can do that. So, I choose Olive Drab, Tiananmen, or Tamiya, Tiananmen, Tamiya. XF62 That's going to be the base I'm kind of tossing up the idea about adding in just a recessed shade uh, I'll go uh, Earth shade, high grass earth shade. And for the streaking pattern, you will need Doomball Brown, which I will explain later on, and Everland Sunset. So right now, all I'm going to do is paint all the carapace, claws, hooks, every, all that kind of stuff in the olive drab. I'll be using a small layer brush and I will also be using um, my extra small artificial brush as well. So. I will bring you guys back once that is finished. Okay, so as you can see, I have done the base coat for all the carapace here. Now I did find something out that I didn't really expect I would recommend actually doing a base coat of either abandoned black or chaos black whichever black you have and then painting on the green otherwise you have to do it in a very thick coat and you can always clean up with screaming skull as well. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go through and 
with just my small airbrush. And it's just bring out the pretty well the separation in all of them with no oil here. And then I will bring you guys back once that's done to do the Doom Ball Brown and the Everland Sunset. Be right back in a minute. And just before anything else, just to give you guys an idea. Yeah, that's my water right now. So I'm going to go change this before we continue on. With the Doom Ball Brown and Avalon Sunset. So, be back in a couple minutes here. Or a couple seconds for you guys. Okay, so just a little bit of a difference here with the water. And yes, you can use one of these as well. I actually use this one for my metallic gates. So that I can continue using my bigger one. And I have this one as well. So. This is what we have here. Don't even worry about cleaning up the dirt. The no oil, if you mess up a little bit, it's fine. So at this point, we will need a very fine brush. So, I actually have two of them. Tianmen, or Tamiya. Tamiya for an artificial brush, an extra small artificial brush, I should say. And this is definitely one of those times where you want to use a palette. Doom Ball Brown. Which in itself is looking a little thick as you can see here. Just a little bit. Probably means that I should add some water into this first. So mix that, up. that was just seven drops. Just plain old tap water. See the difference. I can see how much more runnier it is, which is a lot better. I'm going to use one of these. Use this. This is just a paint grabber. A Tiananmen paint grabber. Or Tamiya. What? Tamiya paint grabber. Slash stirrer. Just gonna put a good dollop of that on my.
pallet. I'm actually going to use my eyedropper again. Do not need much. I only put about half a drop of water. off my tool here really quickly. So my nippers decide to almost stab me. A very sharp Mr. Tool. At the end Mr. Tool. Nippers. Now I have done this before with this one. I have not done it before with my extra small artificial brush. So I'm going to start with my artificial brush. You grab some and using the technique, make it a nice thin line. A little bit on each side. This is where streakiness is fine. I actually want it to be a little bit streaky. You can see there's one side. I'm just going to do the other side here really quickly. lines to be fairly thick for this part. So you can see there's one panel of the therapy completed. I'm going to continue that on throughout the head, on the head, on the weapon a little bit here, on the legs, and on this very top part of the claw here. I'm going to continue that on a little bit. So, I will be back as soon as that is finished. Okay, so, as you can see here, I have completed all of that Doom Ball Brown. So now, with an avalanche sunset. It's going to shake it up. Do almost the exact same thing. But this time, we are not going to use it as much. We still want that Doom Ball Brown to show. Then I'm going to use my extra small artificial brush. Which I need to clean off here really quickly. So I am a very firm believer 
is in this stuff. It is so good. Costs all of like 10, 11 bucks. I barely touched this. It is so good. And it lasts forever. I know the company doesn't like to say that, but I like to say it. Now this is going to be, again, all about brush control, but even more so this time, because we don't want it to go as far, still want that Doom Ball Brown to show. So that's why if you painted it a little bit thicker, perfect. Again, I am using a little pipette. Just, uh, just add in a drop of water. Just to thin down the paint. Of course, you can use thinners. But use less thinners than you would use water, I would say. Thinners are very strong. And yes, I am allowed to say that because I do have both enamel and acrylic thinners. So. This is more for my control. I find I can have more control with this thing. So just As you can see, I'm going to continue doing this on all that Doom Ball Brown that we've already done. There's only a couple more steps left and then we're all completed, so I'll see you guys in a little bit here. Okay, so I have done something different here. So, nope. 
this is the Tyranid that you guys should have right now. And by the way, I forgot to mention this. But with the claws here, with the Aberland Sunset. We just want to do an edge highlight on all the edges. So this is what your turn edge should look like right now. The next step would be to paint all the teeth with the wreck our flesh again. So then this is what he should look like. See the little bit of color on his teeth here. Then after that you'll want to do Agrax Earthshade. Just along on all the teeth there. So then you'll get this guy. See how the teeth are a little bit more. So a little bit more to the teeth there and everything. After that, you want to go back over all the tongues with this crimson that would be for the second time Something like this. And then for the tongue, I used Emperor's Children. And I just basically painted it on the sides here. Yeah, this guy here. And with the tongue that's on the inside, just along the sides again. Now for everyone, now at this point, you're pretty well done. Except for if we want to go on to the next step, which is painting the eyes. But for me, it's also painting stuff on the claws and stuff like that. I use blood for the blood gods. You can use black, you can use a different red, you can use corn red, you can use doom ball, you can use whatever color you feel would best, would best suit yours for me that is blood for the blood gods so as you can see I painted his eyes also painted this little oval on the gun here I put some on the claws as well Now, I should mention this also now, I'm kind of thinking of renaming my High Fleet. I'm thinking of re renaming them to Horus, High Fleet Horus, uh, for Horus Lupercal. Because what better way to stay, to insult, um, 
Insult an Imperium Primarch would be to name a Xenos High Fleet creature after them. Because if you do not know the full story of the Horus Heresy, basically where Chaos infects a Primarch, in this case Horus and a couple other of his brothers. And basically he goes completely, I'm going to kill the Emperor because he's done so much bad stuff to us and all that kind of other stuff. That the Chaos was wanting to protect itself really from what the Emperor was doing in his lab which is varies on which source you use. Some people say it's a webway, the Imperium webway. Some people say it could be as weird as a weapon or something like that. So, basically in the end, Horus kills his, one of his brothers. He almost mortally wounds his father which is the Emperor but the Emperor finally kills Horus and his soul and all that stuff right before he's finally entombed on the Golden Throne where he sits to this day as a skeleton that is being kept alive by machines his mind is being kept alive by machines pretty well. So that's pretty well lore and stuff done for that. But once you do all this, once you do everything on this guy, pretty well it's the base left. So. I like to do for mine. You can do yours as you normally do yours. Is I put a base coat of Argolan Badlands. It's a badass Badlands, not the other one, which is a. have it as well. There it is. Argoland Earth. That was my artificial brush. Oh, but basically I just used my tool here. The small end as you can see. Just go all around it. Make sure that there's there's a little dip where the base and uh, basically where the base plugs into the to the where the tyranid plugs into the base. There's a little space right in there. I just made sure to cover that up. You'll get this. Then I went over that with the Cazador Yellow shade to get this color here. Then I used Tyrant Skull Dry. Did a quick little dry brush of that to get this here and then I paint my the very edges with NATO brown or Tamiya XF68 and 
go end up with this guy. So using 11 different models I can go from where we're done with carapace to completed. So that's how I do all my tier nets. That's how I will even be doing the next one if I haven't already. I probably have already shown it. But it's going to be a Hive Tyrant next. I have him right beside me. I just unboxed him. So be looking out for parts. Or maybe it's already done at this point. I don't know. I do not know what the future holds, so if you are new here and you've liked what you've seen, hit that like button and the subscribe button. And if you aren't new and if you're one of the veterans of the long war here and you've liked what you've seen, hit that like button. It lets me know to continue on with what I'm doing here. And don't be afraid to put comments down in the comment section down below. I'm always open to criticism that's how this camera angle came about actually so I had a comment about it a while ago and I finally figured out how to do this so again I'd like to thank everyone for watching and until next time, remember to rock on.